come here, get off. Welcome, y'all, to this week's episode of The Turn On. Hey. It's your lovely host, Erica and Killer Can, the host with all the friends. Okay, that's a lie. She is okay. not. Girl. <laughs> that's not you. No. Um, anyway, <laughs> this week we are reading The Dawn of Nia, which was written in 2016 by Lauren Shirell. Um, Lauren Shirell is just a really dope, she's dope person, yeah. in addition to being a really great writer. She's co director of the Black Lesbian Literary Collective. Lesbian? Lesbian. I said lesbian. Yes, ma'am. You know my good Midwestern tongue <laughs> on top of this Invisalign because I'm still rocking the bottom tray. Sorry, y'all. Lauren Shirell is co-director of the Black Lesbian Literary Collective. Yes, ma'am. Um, and just overall, just a really dope writer and dope activist. And so um, get your wine, get your weed, get your water because we like to stay hydrated and juicy. Yes. Um, and sit back, relax, and enjoy. The Dawn of Nia by Lauren Shirell. Tail lights, horns, and music liven the downtown cityscape as we walk with entwined arms under the midnight sky. The night is still young. The cool April air is suitable for strolling. I, however, want to cut the dilly dally walk short and head home. Deirdre disagrees. We look too good to be alone right now. We should strut down Beale Street. She playfully pulls at the hem of my backless dress. You did all this to eat and go home? I indeed put a lot of time and energy into our date by shopping for a new dress and permitting Shonda to press my growing hair. She sent my teeny weeny afro on vacation for the weekend. Playing dress up for two hours had been thrilling, but Deidre's titillating dress with keyholes along the torso is steering me to a one-track mind. I'm ready to go home and have her to myself. Ready to be the only one stealing her attention and sneaking peeps her way. She doesn't mind accompanying me back home after I pull her close and reveal what I really want for dessert. When I pull into the garage and kill the ignition, Deirdre caresses my thigh. Follow me. I meet her at the door and we lock fingers as she leads me upstairs into the bedroom. It isn't like I need a guide. Instead, she's showing me that I'm in store for a night we've yet to experience. She pulls me along, allowing me to revel in her lemon-scented perfume and the sway of her hips coated in skin-tight fabric. She keeps the lights off when we step into the bedroom. She lets go of my fingers and opens the shutters to illuminate the shadows on our faces. I love the combination of moonlight and Deirdre. The soft beam transforms her curves to rolling silk, and it makes her skin different, like she's airbrushed in brown. She looks flawless as if a divine hand transformed her right before my eyes. She's a goddess now. This is exactly why I wanted to come home. She takes my hand again, pulling me closer to the bed, our final destination. She wraps my arms around her waist, leaning her head back to rest on my shoulder. The mango-infused shea butter in her hair delights my nose. Our faces meet and she whispers, do you want me? This is exactly why I want to come home, I say, with my fingers inching up her spine. I unzip her dress to unleash the sights and sounds I've been waiting to experience. My palms fall down the phoenix tattoo I noticed the first day we met, the ink mask a scar from a childhood accident, fingertips falling to the small of her back, palms again, tracing the valley that leads to her hips as her dress travels south. Lately, I've noticed a shift in the sex. It's starting to resemble lovemaking. She's craving the experience as much as the act, and she's beginning to trust me. She lets me lead more, but I can't linger or do as I please with her body for too long, a sign of a woman who spent too much time under a man who selfishly touched her. I never let images of him piercing the canal I love to explore taint our intimacy. But sometimes, I wonder whether I truly satisfy her. Do my kisses satiate her appetite for affection? Do my hands quench her thirst for intimacy? Do I cradle her, lift her, and fill her 
as much as she needs. Yes, she whispers. I pretend she's responding to my inner thoughts, though she's answering a question I spoke into her ear. You want this? Mm Mm-hmm, she moans with melody. So I continue to provide her with what she desires, a steady tongue as she slides her clit to the gates of ecstasy. She cups the back of my head to draw me closer and intensify her mounting happiness, her hips dancing to the rhythm of our lips. I push my hands beyond her thighs and onto her stomach, feeling the slow rise and fall of her belly and temple to her aching moans, a plea to gain entry to the city of orgasmic bliss. I have unilateral power to grant her admission, but I choose to deny it. Instead, I rise from my knees and close her legs as I join her in the bed. She continues to lie on her backside, enjoying the residual sensation of my tongue play. I stretch out next to her and stare into her eyes. She smiles, knowing it's time to return the favor. She unzips my dress and laughs when she realizes that there are no undergarments to follow. You never cease to amaze me, she says, and nudges my waist. Turn over. I roll to my stomach and rest my head on crossed hands. The smile on my face exposes my impatience. Deirdre climbs onto my ass, her slick pussy gracing my skin. She leans forward pressing her goodness into me even more as she massages my shoulders and traces her skilled hands along my waist. Please don't make me wait, I say. She teases me, her fingertips tickling the contours of my torso, all because I robbed her of an orgasm. Please, I beg. Finally, she rises from my body. When cooler air meets the wetness lingering from my oral play, Chills race down my spine, inducing goosebumps along my arms. She leans forward and rests her full breasts on my neck. Their radiant heat makes me draw a sharp breath. Now or later, she asks. Now, I order. Slowly, slowly, just as I like, she slides her velvet bosom from my neck to the edge of my back. Damn. I say, when she gradually rubs in the opposite direction. When she reaches my neck, she saturates my lips with kisses and repositions her breasts to do it again and again. I love this shit, but prefer that it's short-lived, which gives me something to look forward to during the week, especially given that I'd asked Deidre to save special massages for weekends. Now that I'm satisfied and spoiled, I want to explore the new bounds of our lovemaking. I'm ready to give her full synergy to the cum land. I slap her ass and she assumes an all fours position, arching her back to relax her abdominal and vaginal muscles in preparation of my entry. I adjust her a little so she can't maintain the arch stance. I want to constrict her muscles as I insert more fingers than she expects. I know from experience that it feels better when it hurts a bit. The lustful sounds of her crying out to a higher power and interjecting my name This is exactly why I wanted to come home. So welcome back. We just read The Dawn of Nia by Lauren Shirell. Um, Kimria, thank you for your lovely reading. Will you give us a little more background on this story? Sure. So in the dawn of Nia, um, we meet Nia, the protagonist. And when we come in, she's at the funeral for her mentor, who's kind of like her mom, Pat. And the book follows what happens after Pat dies. And one of the things that happens is that she meets Deirdre, who is someone who is close, well, we, we find out very quickly, so I don't think this is giving anything away, that Deirdre is the daughter of Pat that she never knew existed. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, kind of pursues her. Mm-hmm. And hijinks ensue. Hijinks ensue. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, so um, 
Dear listeners, we want to kind of take you into the origin story of the turn on or give you a little bit of background on us. Mm -hmm. So when we started this podcast, we thought we would just be reading a bunch of like really smutty, sexy, erotic (laughs) stories, which... There's nothing wrong with it. We and absolutely, it, there's a bunch of it on the show. <laughs> yeah, there's a yeah, there is a bunch of good smutty erotic stories out there. But we're also finding that um there is just a lot of really good black literature that's mm-hmm. not being given shine. So um we're That finding, also includes like sex things. Yeah, that just also includes sex things, which I think is just so typical of women you know like we i mean sex is just part of it. it's a part of who we are and so we shouldn't have to go to a separate special book for sex we should just you know have sex as a part of Mm -hmm. what we do and the things that we read and so we're finding now that a lot of the um stories that we're pulling the excerpts that we're getting are from just really good stories and not things that are necessarily categorized as erotica exactly and so it might have a really great scene in it which just speaks to how great the writer is Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily an erotic story and so we want to um categorize this book as that and i think the past run we've had recently have just been just really good stories not necessarily romance or erotica um but just really good stories that have that have a really steamy scene in it Mm -hmm. and this story is one of them so just kind of wanted to give that background um on it because i you know we highly recommend recommend this book which is a female female um novel it's really female female novel yeah they don't does the author categorize it as Mm -hmm. romance uh no she doesn't yeah it's just a just Two women and they are in their relationship. I don't want to say their adventure. <laughs> well, it is an, <laughs> it is an, adventure. an adventure. But, um, you know, just two women. And as they go through the world and as they go through the world, sex is one of those things that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just wanted to highlight that and kind of make that a footnote as you kind of see what else we have in store. Because I'm really excited about some of the not yeah, quite some things we have coming up stuff we have. In the hopper for the rest of this season and season two. Da, da, da. <laughs> um, so did you have anything to add? No, I think you got it. Oh, okay. Bam. <laughs> Eloquisha over here. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, you know, I just had to toot my own horn. Toot toot. Okay, so the scene opens and the two characters, Nia and Deidre, are mm-hmm. leaving a date. And um, one of the things that I thought was really cool was how who who I can't remember who said it, but someone was like, "Look, you let's go out and walk around and show off how cute you look. You did all this just to get dressed." Deidre said home. that, yeah. yeah. And Deidre said that, and it was like, "But uh, I won't, bitch. I, I got, got dressed, so you can take this shit off." Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which yes. made me. Th- I mean, I feel like both of them had like very had different views on how the night was gonna go well not even how the night was gonna go because i think they both probably thought like we're gonna, we gonna end up we're gonna end this <laughs> on an exclamation point but um i think deidre was like you know you got dressed to get dressed up and show off how cute you are mm-hmm. and he was like no nah, i got dressed to seduce your ass to come home and take this off 45 minutes to get all dressed up <laughs> exactly <laughs> we ain't even gonna make it to this club Mm-mm. so when you get dressed up for a date are mm. you dressing for your partner or are you dressing for yourself or are you dressing for all them mm. other hoes yeah i'm not thinking about anybody else uh i'm dressing i'm dressing for myself because when i like the way that i look i feel more confident and i feel sexier and i have a better time you know what i mean like i'm not Mm -hmm. feeling self-conscious when i know that when i walk out the door that i had to take a minute and be like bitch yes yeah um and then i'm dressing for my partner because i want to excite them too (laughs) yeah yeah and yeah you know i mean my ass is usually hanging out so yeah yeah same <laughs> um and i got a whole lot of wagon yes dragging. you do <laughs> um you know so i had a partner who was who really enjoyed seeing other people react to uh, you. yeah react mm. and so i mean i i always like i got to a point we went to a party on thursday mm. and our homegirl had on these shoes and she was like bitch these shoes hurt so fucking bad like 
to the point where she <laughs> she had a chair mm. and would just drag it around the party with her. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's just dragging a chair around the party with her because she's like, my feet hurt too bad. And I'm so past that. Yeah. Because also, I'm I'm not one of those people that will take my shoes off. Like just, barefoot. Yeah, I'm just not one of those. Like I, did, I or will remember I put, that one time you did and you cut your foot. Oh, well, <laughs> that's well, why you don't do that shit no more. I was, and if like we were in a parking I was, garage, no, I was utterly drunk. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it was homecoming drunk. weekend. Homecoming weekend. Yeah, triflingly drunk. Like this is like more than a decade ago. No. It was, yeah. I wish I could I say it was it a was. No, it wasn't. It was. Wasn't I still living in New York when that happened? We were celebrating our ten years. Oh, bitch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like, not quite. I can't, I can't even. I can't even blame <laughs> on you. I just blame it on thinking that I was young, drunk as hell, took off my shoes, mm-hmm. going out of Union Station, which is just festering, oh, like disgusting. Fucking boy. Took off my shoes and I cut my foot yeah. on the fucking escalator. Mm-hmm. So I'm like drunk and I wrap my foot in like this nasty rag oh. and then I'm like trotting blue. It was just disgusting. Was <laughs> it was Everybody so was bad. twisted though. So nobody even really took it seriously because we were all so drunk. Yeah and then I like you probably saw like blood yeah. of like a trail of trail. blood. It was bad. <laughs> So, you I, always, your shoes on. I always tie my tetanus shot to <laughs> our sorority's 10-year anniversary. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Our line, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, our line. It was so trashy and mm-hmm. tragically horrible. So, anyway. I don't do the whole pain, like, for the sake of fashion anymore. Well, but I am one of those people, if I commit to an outfit, I've committed. So, if my feet hurt now, like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to suffer until I can't suffer anymore. And then when I can't suffer anymore, bitch, lights out, then close the shop. Summer. I'm not going to keep going. We I bring gonna... another pair of shoes that nope. match. So, like, when we were out Friday, too, mm-hmm. you didn't come out. It's... And I had. <laughs> I was taking a good time. I know. And so I had flats in my clutch (laughs) and I was prepared if I had, you know, got switched over that line where they hurt too bad. I was just going to switch them shits out and my partner would have just carried my heels and that would have been that. No one's going to have any more fun. (laughs) My feet hurt. It's done. So, I mean, but I also. Because you're miserable when your feet hurt. But I'm going home when my feet hurt. So because of whatever shoe I have on. Is going to it gives me lasting power. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw in a shoe that I'm walking out the door uncomfortable in right. anymore. So yeah. that's the timer. Like, mm-hmm. think, well done. <laughs> you hit your you hit your limit. Also, you know? when Erica hits her wall, she hits her wall. Yeah, hard. there's no like, there's no fun. Like, there's no like. Once I hit my wall, bitch, just let her go. I'm done. Yeah, like don't even try. And Karen knows that now. She's like, just Bye, bitch. let that bitch go. Don't ride with her. Um, get an Uber home. So, yeah. Um, so when I get dressed, I definitely dress for comfort. But mm-hmm. I also have, you know, like you get older, you start gaining a little weight, getting a little extra cushion, a little juice, a little a little jiggles in the wibbles. <laughs> uh, and so I've gotten better about dressing in clothes that are comfortable but that also show off what I like about myself Mm -hmm. um I'm a round bottom gal (laughs) so (laughs) there's like some country song about there is a round bottom gal and I'm like that that white man wrote that song for me (laughs) oh wait no never mind I got like you know Mm -hmm. slave fantasies in my head when I said that anyway um so yeah I dress I dress in what is comfortable, mm-hmm. but I also dress in what I think would, you know, what I think my partner would like. I mean, if this is a first date, bitch, I'm wearing what I want. Um, really? You don't dress to impress on your first date? Oh, I definitely dress to impress, but it's not like, ooh, I think he'll like this. No, right. it's, you know, but if I'm like feeling you and I know like, oh, you love my neckline, then I'm going to show <laughs> something that shows my neckline. But usually it's like, girl, look at that juicy booty. <laughs> So, you like I play to my strength. And yeah, I play. Yeah. I play to my strength. Yeah, I just on my, so on my first date with my current partner, it was like the opposite of like I. It was the date kind of remember it was like not planned, but I was suddenly free and was like, hey, we should go out. And so then it was happening, 
and then it wasn't happening because something happened with his phone. I thought that nigga ghosted me. Yeah, <laughs> I remember I that. So I was like, fuck it, and got in the shower and like washed my hair. <laughs> I was like, I, I guess we not going out then. <laughs> Fine. I was I was okay with it. So I like was washing my hair and then he like figured out the phone thing and hit me up and was like, So what's up? And I was like, Fuck what you is? mean? <laughs> I'm twenty minutes in a deep. Right. Condition. I'm like, I am literally twisting my hair right now and finna lotion my body and settling for a good rom com and you know, it's all your fault. And he was like my phone was fucked up. I'm sorry. Let's go out anyway. I don't care if your hair is twisted. And I was like, nigga, I look like somebody's little homely cousin when my hair is twisted. That ain't it. <laughs> so I wore a wig. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I never wear wigs on dates. Because I really love my hair. And I never want to like also you know give you a fall. I've worn a wig lately. Oh, I can do, use them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Feel free. You know, um, those wigs with the baby hair really bother me these days. <laughs> I think we talked about Did we talk about No, this we did not. Because the thing is, I love a wig. I, in my mind, some like weave company or wiggery will like. A wiggery. Some wiggery wants to like sponsor a group of like late 30, early 40s hot girls, mm-hmm. like hot aunties. <laughs> And in my mind, we're having like fabulous photo shoots yes. with like wigs at various and shit. brunches, switching yeah. out your wigs. No, I want to be like hanging off the back of my Jeep, like oh, okay. in some booty shorts okay. and like a Ooh. purple wig. Like I want them to like go like all this. out. So I love you a got good a whole wig. vision. Oh, I have a vision. I love a wig. I love wigs. But I feel like sometimes we're just going a little too far with that baby hair stuff. Yeah, I don't have any baby hair on my wigs. Yeah, yeah. I just. I mean, I it's just, a lot of work. Like, you got to do that. A lot of me, I do that shit yourself. And yeah. I don't have the patience. No, I, like, I. So, you know how people watch. I do watch ASMR YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. I also watch ones of people, like, making. Making wigs. Oh, well, so my, like, crazy soothing videos. ASMR, people cooking food, people decorating cakes. Mm-hmm. People um, making those little tiny. Clay I was about to say you be miniatures. Uh, yeah, because you be making, showing, sending me videos of people making little tiny food too. Yep, yep. Lord, uh-huh. that's real food. But they also make like baby, like food with like clay. <laughs> and then recently, it's been like wig tutorials. Really? Like, in, I mean, only way I own is prints. Yeah. Right there. But I'm not like a wig lady, but I like really enjoy watching like just the creativity of like mm-hmm. black women getting like a nineteen dollar wig off Amazon and, and turning that shit amazing. into like amazingness. I just yeah, I use that as a guide to cut one of my wigs, like a video. Like it was when I watch videos about this wig, people are like, "Yeah, it's too heavy," but here's how to like cut shape it. it up. And I bought a little razor, and I got all of that from watching a black chick on a video on YouTube. So yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, I absolutely adore that. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't wear them often, but I wore a wig on that date because my hair was fucking twisted up, and it was raining. <laughs> So I wore jeans and rain boots. No, I wore real boots, leather boots, but like over the knee leather boots and a bodysuit and my fucking cocoon sweater that I wear everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Ooh, I, and I was like, this is what he going to get in a I raincoat. Packing, I saw my like favorite <laughs> fall sweater. I was like, oh, bitch, you about Almost to get worn <laughs> out. Like, oh. <laughs> I have like a uniform on the weekends. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. Them joggers and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love a good jogger. I mean, me too now. Because you don't have to wear underwear with them. Yeah, I always wear underwear, but that's because juices. <laughs> I mean, shit. I be struggling. They gonna get out. Oh, my God. I was so swampy thighed the other night. <laughs> It's been humid here. Oh my gosh, we stand outside at a party, Mm. and I'm like, oh, I was like, I am like a swamp underneath. (laughs) Just, (laughs) I just felt so unfresh. Okay, I'm sorry. We all all. so we're dressing for a date. Mm -hmm. You dress for what? I dress for my. Well, I'm always comfortable. I don't wear anything that's gonna have me fucking you know uncomfortable all night because then i'm not gonna be happy and yeah. then what's the point of us being out if i'm uncomfortable and all sour in the fucking face mm-hmm. so i wear what makes me comfortable but i also wear something that's cute to me and that's cute to him he's a sneakerhead i hate calling them sneakers but i guess that's what they call themselves they're not called tennis shoe enthusiasts if they are not and they should be because the T-S-E. sneaker thing is so fucking he's a weird C. <laughs> So he he like collects shoes like 
mm-hmm. like amazing shoes. And so he has started a collection for me. And so if we just go into a bar or going to watch a fight or an arcade, you know, something, then it's great. Because then I just be out there in my tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. I so, love it. Yeah. Jeans and tennis shoes and a crop top and I'm good. Okay. So one of the things that one of the lines that stood out to me was when um, Nia said that their romps have transitioned between Mm. have transitioned from sex to lovemaking. Yeah. Do you think there's a difference? Uh, I mean, I feel like there's different. I don't know. I, I think that there are different modes of sex, you know, yeah. like sometimes it's sweet and it's gentle and y'all are holding hands and, you know, while you're doing it and sure. And sometimes you get a dick slapped across <laughs> your yeah, face. Yeah, like sometimes you they fuck in your face and sometimes, you know, you're on the little the little ramp thing and you got a, a, your, your hands cuffed. And I mean, it and then. Sometimes it's like some tantric, barely moving, slow wine, Tony, Tony, Tony shit. Like there's all these slow different. Wine. Yes. Sorry. It was a great addition to my sex list, by the way, my playlist. I have this really great sex playlist. Me too. That someone else made. Really? Um, it's like the sexiest songs or the sexiest songs you could ever think of or something. It's like 10 hours of it. I'm oh, like, shit. I don't know who having 10 hours sex because I'm sure not. We getting like a good yeah. like. Not six hours. Nine <laughs> hours. I I want to make myself you want to put a anything. number on it. I, you know, I have an amazing list that never gets old to me. But I had another version of it once that had like I got shamed with by the nigga who I was using it with because so it had like you Look know I know oh. yeah whatever I stopped fucking him a long time ago, but it, it had like you know stuff like like what's on it right now it's got like when we by tank you know that's my yeah, is that a uh, jam. uh an apple music playlist no but i can sh- it, it's on there so i should be able to share it with you yeah if you made yeah. an apple music you, can, you share. can share yeah, yeah. um she just got the slow jams on it you know what i mean but it also has shit like shake it fast yeah and yeah yeah like shit that, shit yeah, that yeah, it did yeah. not have yet on it. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely has shake shake your ass on it. And I'm so mad <laughs> because at some point you gotta shake it fast. Yeah, and I show show I like what to you're switch it with. up. Like so, we we having the soft sweet, and then we can change positions, and we can do the hard and the ass shaking. And I like to mix it up so. He did shame me enough that I made another version of the list that didn't have like the Fuck fast songs in it. X. I know. Um, but yeah, I like a good a good playlist. But it even without having the fast songs in there, it it changes it sets a different mood depending on what the song is. And I like that. Yeah. So I don't know that there's a difference. I mean, maybe I do if I'm fucking somebody for the first time, it's probably it doesn't feel as intimate or as you know, there's no staring into eyes, probably, I guess, with the the first person, a random person. But maybe there is, depending on yeah. what our connection is. So I don't know. Yeah. What about you? Do you think there's a difference? Um, you know, I think I get what she's saying there, where it seems to be a little more. An increase in intimacy. Yeah. And the letting down of the guard. Yeah. But I also feel like I can look back on experiences that I've had, like, with partners. And it's been, like, some, like, whoo, shit. Like, we got mm-hmm. a patch that hole in that wall. <laughs> <laughs> and it was clearly love making because mm-hmm. it was that, you know, that intimate. I think. I think that there's a di- a huge difference between sex and intimacy. Yes. Let me say that. Absolutely. And not to cheapen sex, because I do think that sex can be an intimate act. Mm-hmm. But sex is also just a is a physical something that happens. Mm-hmm. And I think that her saying that they moved from sex to intimacy, I mean, from sex to lovemaking means that like, there's an increased amount of intimacy or yeah. there's been there's some trust enough shared or, intimacy yeah. to make this feel like there's more of you going into mm-hmm. it. No, that makes sense you know, to me. More soul ties being. 
<laughs> I say that so facetiously. But, you know. No, that's real. I mean, I have been um, in relationships. I can think of, like, two people where it felt like, and I, I remember saying this, like, you can't be intimate with me without it being sex. So there could be no, oh, we're just cuddling Girl, on the couch watching a so movie. Loud? It had to turn into now there's a hand in my bra. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you are so wrapped up in your penis that you can't just sit here and enjoy this intimate moment with me without it having to turn into, okay, now we need to have penetrative sex. Like leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, I had the problem where there was no intimacy. Unless it was sex. Unless it was like, couldn't even be like, there was just like, you know, well, I fucked you last night. And it's like, no. Could, could we sit here together? I, Can we talk? And we say this all the time. <laughs> Dicks are low in value and abundant. Fucking abundant. And Oof. so, you know, you can find anybody that will fuck. And, and that's, and that's not I just a, 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 well. a, just to say, you know, that's not just a dick that's attached to your body, right? Let's <laughs> very clear. Cause like, the strap is also abundant. Yeah. Like you can, <laughs> you people know how to work a penis, mm-hmm. whether it's attached yeah. to them or they bought at the store. Exactly. Like it's, that's just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's the intimacy that brings it, you know, brings it home and i think that's i think that women that are that get dick whipped like or digmatized like no you need to understand like ain't shit special about him doing this Mm -mm. it's and if he a trash bag ass man like girl as we said before that's usually just the 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 gift that god gave him exactly like (laughs) so people will look at his ass yeah he's trying (laughs) to like make use of the shit that the lord gave him Mm -hmm. but yeah so i think that there's so like that the intimacy part is the part that she's really talking about. I mean, I don't want to put words in the author's mouth, but I think, she, you know, that yeah. it, by this point there had been enough intimacy or shared intimacy. And built trust, kind of, I think. That kind of imbued itself into, mm-hmm. um, girl, I'll just be using words. If I'm <laughs> using them wrong, y'all let us know. But, you know, that kind of marinated itself into the situation mm-hmm. that made this a little bit more than just what it was. Right. So, yeah. Um, I also love in the writing how Nia really, like, as she's talking through this experience, she's talking about, like, what she's doing to Deidre mm-hmm. and how Deidre's responding. And it's really, she really took the focus. I mean, like, it wasn't until she had done pleasuring, and I'm probably not remembering this correct but i'm almost positive she had she was pretty much done pleasuring deidre before she even talked about how she felt and how well except for that she withheld her orgasm <laughs> yeah like, Ooh, look Ooh, at you girl making her wait yeah yeah <laughs> but i mean she and it but it wasn't it was more of a um i feel like that was long game trying yes. to make sure she got like when you come, I want it to be amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're doing this. Yeah, building up some more anticipation, some wait time. Exactly. And she was just, the, she was a thoughtful lover. And mm-hmm. just, it was, that was a, be- it was a beautiful scene because it was really, she was really focused upon giving Deidre this. Upon, I'm sorry. Focused upon. <laughs> focused on giving Deidre this like really amazing experience. Mm-hmm. And what can I do? And she got off, yeah. you know. As a result of it, I mean, I think, again, I think that's what makes you a good lover. If you mm-hmm. want, to, I mean, like, it's a dance and you got to remember that is you're, if you're saying so low. Well, it can you, be so low, but if you with a partner <laughs> or multiple, <laughs> then it's a group project. It's a group dance. It's a group project. It's a step. And don't be that, don't be that group member that don't do your job and then get a good grade. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I really like that part about it. Um, so, girl, mm. I, I have in here notes, sensual massage. Uh, I think this is just reflective of the fact that this is two women. Yeah. Because I've never had a good massage from a man. Oh, I have. Did it end with a dick in your back? No. Oh. It was the next day. I mean, it was the sex was the night before and oh, okay. and the morning too. But this was just like a, another separate. Let me just rub you down, cause I we I had taken a shower, 
And, you know, I, I be ashy. I got eczema. Like, I have to be good about my moisturizing situation. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to moisturize myself. And he was like, let me do that. Lay down. That was nice. And it just turned into a whole best massage I've ever had that wasn't, like, from a professional. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I get them regularly. But every other massage I've ever had from a man <laughs> has been like, a pr- uh, uh, Exactly. Uh, like, the little, the, them little fingertips on your, of like, <laughs> your shoulder. Of like, Four fingertips, yes. like barely, just barely touching uh, 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 it, and, like, and then here's a dick, <laughs> dick in your back. <laughs> exactly. Like, hey. It has always struck me. A lot of times, I find myself laughing when they do that because it's such a fucking transparent ploy. Because let's be clear, in the porn, when they do the like massage things, mm-hmm. they be massaging the fuck out of the people, <laughs> and then they like, if you if this was a scene, something you learn from porn, at least like do it right. Do it right yeah. based on the porn. It's so fucking half ass. And it's always just a, to me, it's a ploy to get your shirt off, right? Because first it's like, well, you gotta take off your shirt. I'm thinking of a very specific instance. And then it's like, well, you need to take off your bra because I can't really get at your back and I don't want to get lotion <laughs> on your bra. <laughs> so you so should go on, Yes, and take that off. So now you're lying there, you got your breasts Titties out, out. down on this nigga's bed or couch or whatever fuck and hoping you don't catch nothing because niggas. <laughs> <laughs> and then he puts them little fingertips on and your like, shoulder. So you went through all this shit for, <laughs> for you to do <laughs> this, and and now your dick is out. Oh, you know what? I did have a a partner who was really good at massaging. Yeah. Oh, he was really good. He was mm. really good at massaging and stretching because I was working oh, out a lot. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. would like stretch the fuck out of me, and then <laughs> get to that groin stretch. <laughs> <laughs> right things would happen but nonetheless it was um so i did have a good i mean it would end but up think with about sex, it that's it was one good, person out of how many niggas have tried to get you undressed under the pretext ugh. of giving you a massage over the years look it don't work yeah Let's just say it. if you ain't the specific like, people we talking about just hang it up and if i let you do it you. it's literally i'm not stupid i know that you're just trying to get me out of your clothes and that you're too fucking immature to just take them off me or you know what i mean like yeah, like come on let's be better about this yeah like the, uh, or like the like tickling have you ever had a man like <laughs> oh my god i would fucking kick you in the chin <laughs> if you tried tickling me i had a man who like that would be how he would like get close to me is he would like, <laughs> like tickle that me? Would, that would dry my pussy up oh so quick. But but I I liked him. So you know, it's always like you're just allowing this shit to happen, yeah. just like with the massages. It's just like you know what the ploy is, but you want to go ahead and get your nut. So you just go ahead and let it happen. Like I said, half the time I'm giggling, to be quite honest, because I can't hold that shit in because it's fucking stupid. Yeah, but you're giggling at him, not yes, with not him. Yes, not with yeah. him. He, I'm yeah. sure they think that, but no, no, sir. She liked this. No, no you're a goofball. This is but ridiculous. You got really just good bring shoulders. out the dick. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. But yeah, tickling also in that same category. Torrash. Yeah, I'll tell you who that was later. Who? <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. Ew. <laughs> ew. Only in the beginning, but yeah. Yeah, because also, like, I want someone that's confident mm-hmm. and self assured. And I feel like tickling is what That ain't like, it. Let me come here, little girl. <laughs> oh, no. See if I can touch you. I mean, it's just <laughs> weird. Like, don't tickle. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, y'all. I'm hit the, hit the stuff. It is. We'll be in our new studios next week. We will. Um, in this story, as you explained, um, Nia is, Nia and Deidre d- would have, well, I don't know if they would have met each other, but they both were very connected without really knowing it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, I'll tell a little story about myself. Hmm. So my mother had a best friend in high school. Her best friend lived across the street. And was her best friend all through high school. They were homegirls. My mama go out one night, meet this man. They start dating. This man comes home, uh, comes to my mama's house to meet the family. And he comes to the house. He mentions, hey, my aunt live across the street. Shut house. up. And this was <laughs> her best friend's mom. Wow. So it was one of those situations where it was like, whoa, this world is small as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, And I feel like 
Nia and Deidre have that similar situation where yeah. Deidre is Nia's mentor slash fake mom's long lost Damn daughter. daughter. Yeah. Um, have you had a situation like that where you might have been with somebody and then, you know, after a few conversations, you're like, damn, 20 more minutes, we would have met through this person. I don't think I have, but my family is full of those stories. Mm -hmm. So my family's fucking huge. My father is one of 15 kids. Mm -hmm. We're from Mississippi. (laughs) So, and my family mostly now lives in Cleveland and at least a couple of my cousins. Yes. Shout out to the great migration. um, Have been out on dates with people. Like, I remember once my cousin in particular was like, yeah, my Uncle Frog. And the chick was like, <laughs> Nigga, I got an Uncle Frog. They was cousins. And my one of my cousins brought somebody home to my Auntie Berta house. And, uh, How you got an Uncle Frog? That is the coolest <laughs> fucking name on earth. Oh, we got all kinds of interesting names. And then my um my auntie, he brought this chick home. And it says Grandma is Big Ma. And my grandma, I mean, my auntie was like, Nigga, that's your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so and then she was just over at the house with family. Like that happens a lot in my family. Ooh. Yeah, luckily it's never happened to me. But if I met anybody with any of the the last names they are associated with my daddy's side, I'd be scared. Yeah, because it's not that. It's a lot of us, but mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, they're not the most common names. All of. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, my high school boyfriend was my mom's other best friend in high school's nephew. Shut up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we grew up, uh, it's hard to tell the story without like giving all my deets, but <laughs> we, I changed high schools my freshman year. Mm-hmm. And so I came into this high school in a community that my mom grew up in. And it was, you know, like, so I finally transferred to a school where like, all my mama people <laughs> lived and the teachers either taught my mama or went wow. to school with my mama, like one of those like really small, close communities. Mm-hmm. And so started dating. Well, got really cool with this girl. We became best friends. Her daughter's now my goddaughter. Hmm. Um, and uh, she is my, and so I was like telling my mom or my granny or somebody and mentioned the last name. She was like, that's so-and-so's niece and i was like oh shit and at the time we had no yeah and i think at the time i was simultaneously like hollering at her brother and you know oh dating her brother oh yeah it didn't we didn't date that long because i definitely i clearly remember like going out doing high school whole shit with her (laughs) so i don't think i was dating her brother that long but nonetheless it was one of those yeah yeah. but i mean again it's one of those like really small neighborhoods Mm -hmm. really small communities where everybody knows everybody i mean i go home and um see my nieces and nephews playing with kids and i'm like oh i went to school with her mama you know one of those communities which you know is a blessing and a curse yeah i mean it's a blessing for me because i ain't there no more but i can only imagine yeah your adult life trying to yeah i mean i I, I can't think of any yeah i can't think of any i mean i do i know that we have some folks in our friend group who have like met somebody and then found out it was an ex of somebody else's yeah and i've definitely fucked people who my friends have fucked because hbcu hbcus (laughs) And I didn't, it wasn't even until after college that it happened. So it was really like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, I can think of somebody right now that's fucked at least like three or four of us. (laughs) I know one and I'm thinking, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. He ain't deserve to smell none of these pussies. But (laughs) Uh, whatever. I know which one you think. We make poor decisions and we make decisions based on the information that we have at the time. time, Yeah. It is what it is. Who am I to judge? That's right. Um, also with Nia and Deidre, um, I think part of the reason that they are so, well, from what I've read of the book, well, my interpretation of the book, let me not say that, my interpretation of the book, I feel like part of the reason that they're so drawn and so into one another, partly is because they've experienced this like really heavy trauma loss, you know? Mm -hmm. This heavy relationship, 
Yeah, although, you know. Well, I don't want to say lost because. Yeah, because Deidre's Deidre not close to her really mom. Her mom. Exactly. Oh. She wasn't close to her. But but I think that. Oh, you know what? Let me say this. <sighs> Nia lost. And someone came in mm-hmm. and filled that. Someone space. who is re- who is closely tied to that person. And, you know, she talks about like being drawn to her. Mm-hmm. And I agree with you. I think that part of why she feels, quote unquote, drawn to her is because she thinks that maybe she'll fill some of the hole that is left from Pat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've yeah. been there. <laughs> Girl, haven't we all? Yeah. Um, do you want to share your story? or? Well, sure. So, you know, I um, was married and then divorced. Thank God. Um, and I think that part of why I ended up with the person who I married is because when I met him, I was grieving the loss of the man who I was with before. Mm-hmm. He died pretty horribly in an accident. Tragic accident. Yeah. And um, I was still trying to pick myself back up. Yeah. Like I was very raw and um, pretty transparent about like what, you know, what was hurting me and what I thought I that wanted there was a hole, and that the there hole was, was a hole. And I mean, his picture was still a picture of us up on my wall mm-hmm. when I started dating, the, you know, the next person, like all of this. And I think that it was literally that I wanted somebody to kind of cling on to. Because yeah. I was feeling alone and I was like, I had our long got tired of talking to my friends about it because I didn't want to depress anybody. And I was in grief like there. That was, when I, that was the beginning of my therapy journey as I was seeing someone for grief. Um, but to have someone who was not connected to that, who didn't know him, who was whose purpose in my life wasn't to sit and talk through the trauma that ensued from that. Um just I guess kind of felt good it went and because I was so honest about the whole and narcissists are really good at molding themselves into mm-hmm. whatever shape you leave for them um I ended up in a you know a not great situation yeah, yeah. so absolutely I have been there yeah I think with so with my last marriage last marriage with my marriage <laughs> that I'm now out of um I think it was that, but it was a little different in the sense that, like, we shared. Y'all lost together. We had a lot of loss together. Yeah. Like, he lost his mom, and then I lost my mom yeah, a few months trauma later. Yeah, are real. And then we had multiple miscarriages. Mm-hmm. And I think that that made it just... Insp- I mean, I think leaving a marriage for anyone, choosing to divorce, even if you're positive that I don't need to be with this person. It's still a tough thing. It's still thing. tough divorcing. Um. And I think it made it that much more difficult going, having gone through such loss together, Mm -hmm. you feel like we have this shared, this bond, like you were with me when I lost my mom, I was with you when you lost your mom, Mm -hmm. we lost these two children together. And it's so difficult um, because you feel like this is the one person in the world that understands, that understands and it gets me. But I mean, if I was being truly honest to myself, we were I, we were grieving these two situations separately, you know. Right. We were alongside each other, but not together. But not together, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely. Um, I mean, and not to say that you know, because I do think that sometimes loss brings people together, and they might be able to navigate it well. But I also think that such significant trauma, kind of not kind of clouds your Mm -hmm. judgment your it dulls your senses Mm -hmm. and so you're not able to uh you're not going into things as clear as you normally would yeah and it can kind of cause things to go awry well and I think it can also make it difficult to feel like you can leave yeah like if you know that this person has experienced loss you don't want to add like heap another loss to their pile Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I remember saying that same thing in Mm -hmm. therapy and my therapist was like, look, you're not this man's first trauma and you you will not be be his last. last. So and don't traumatize yourself for the sake of saving somebody else. Like that is the the root of fucking codependency. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, but it can be hard to get there, especially not without therapy. Girl, not without therapy. (laughs) Once again, our episodic shout out to 
therapy. Mm-hmm. Bow, bow, bow. Maybe we need to do like air horns or something every time we do. Like we need that. to get like an app, like you know, Kid Fury has been <laughs> using that fucking app to make sounds whenever he uh, is doing Nicki Minaj. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we need something like that so that we can like just you know our periodic therapy shout out. Well, now that we said therapy shout out. I think this wraps up this episode. Right. It's like, turn like the, the turn on bingo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. bitch, they got therapy. We got there. We made it to therapy. <laughs> so, all righty. Um, so, this has been this week's episode of The Turn On. These mm-hmm. are your lovely hosts, Eric and Karia, two hoes, making, making it clap. clap. This episode was produced by us, Kenry and Erica, and edited by Ballistic. The theme song is from Brazy. We want to hear from y'all. Send recommendations for books you want us to read on the show and all the questions that you want us to answer related to sex and all the other stuff. You can send those to the turn on podcast at gmail.com. And please take a moment to review the show, five stars only please, and subscribe to us in your favorite podcast app. Then follow us on Twitter at the Turn On Pod and Instagram at the Turn On Podcast and head over to the turnonpodcast.com to find links to the books that we feature, transcripts of our shows, and info on all the guests that we talk about. Bye!